Hi all, this is your TA, Aldo San Pedro. I'm gonna be reviewing problem number four from our LC questions that we just briefly touched on. Um, I'm gonna start at the same place um, in the beginning where we were covering some Mendelian exceptions uh, that are listed in our outline. So we already did some uh, questions on epistasis where we see two genes contributing to one phenotypic trait. We saw that in the Labrador co color problem um, where we have a gene, a separate gene, controlling the pigment, and that ultimately uh, impacts the appearance of um, that pigment that is coded by a different gene. We also have incomplete dominance, uh, where an intermediate phenotype is expressed in heterozygotes within the same gene. Uh, for codominance, which is apparent in blood type, just like we discussed in class, um, you have both phenotypes expressed in heterozygotes. Uh, and you see this here, we have the IA, IB um, blood cell there with both the triangles from blood type A and both the little circles from blood type B. You don't see an intermediate, rather you just see the appearance of both phenotypes in that heterozygous IA, IB individual. Also in this problem, we see a Mendelian exception uh, that we can call multiple alleles. Um, where you have a gene that has more than two alleles. This might be new for some of you, uh, as we just did some problems where we only had two alleles for a gene. But yes, you can have more than two. You can have four, you can have six, you have eight alleles. Really depends on the amount of genetic variation um, that that gene can, can have. So now that we got our table filled out here, I'm just gonna copy and paste the two um, exceptions that we see here for blood type. We see two exceptions to simple Mendelian rules. We see codominance, and we also see multiple alleles. And just like we discussed, both phenotypes are expressed in heterozygous individuals for that are codominant. And when you have multiple alleles, um, you have a gene that can have more than two alleles. Here's an arrow blue arrow uh, showing where we have that codominant phenotype uh, where we have both those circles and the triangles and then here is a green arrow pointing to our multiple alleles within our blood type gene anyways let's get to the question now um, so our question asks a woman who is blood type a has a daughter who is type o and a son who is type b which of the following is a possible genotype of her uh, children's father. So right off the bat, uh, before I even think about answering that last part, we see a lot of information. We see uh, that the woman has uh, the parent, the female parent has blood type A, the daughter has blood type O, and a son who is blood type B. That's a lot of information. And before I, I kind of go in and tackling these, these problems, I like to uh, work it out and define the phenotype and the genotype for each progeny just to make it a little bit easier for me. So right here, I'm just putting our daughter phenotype and our daughter pheno uh, genotype. Our phenotype, as stated in the problem, is gonna be type O. And that's what type O looks like. You don't have any of those starchy molecules on the outside. And then we know that the only genotype that lets you have that type O phenotype is gonna be little i, little i. For our son, uh, the problem states that our son is type B. So our phenotype is gonna be type B with those little circles. And we know uh, that our blood type either has to be IB, I, or IBB. Anyways, I'm gonna be uh, constructing a Punnett square here of our father and mother, uh, now that we know our progeny um, genotypes. So we know that our daughter genotype is II, once again. So we know that our Punnett cross must uh, have a combination that results in an II offspring. So we can give a little i to both our mother and our father, and we can fill those out for the other um, squares in the Punnett as well. The problem states that our mother has blood type A, so we can immediately deduce that the remaining uh, allele for the mother is gonna be IA. So our mother's genotype is IA, little i, 
and then we can kind of carry that down uh, where you have IA in this punnet uh, box and IA little i in that punnet box. Uh, what about our father? So for our father, um, I like to look at the, the son here who is type B. We know that our father has to have a IB allele because there's no other combination that will distribute an IB allele in our Punnett cross. So I'm just going to put IB here for our father, and then I'm going to carry it over and fill in the, the rest of the Punnett cross here. So we have IA, IB, which would result in a AB blood type phenotype. We also have a IB little i genotype here, which would result in our son's phenotype of type B. We also have a IA little i uh, genotype here, which would result in a um, blood type A phenotype. However, we don't have any offspring that that's observed. Um, anyways, we see our last, last possible uh, genotype combination here, little i, little i, that resulted in our daughter's phenotype of type O. So we cross-checked everything. We now know um, that our father must be IB, little i, if we have a daughter that's type O, and a son that's type B, with a mother that is type A. Um, the steps uh, are That's a lot of information, so I'm just going to highlight um, the important key parts of this question that, that led to my answer of the father being I, B, and little i. Well, that's going to be it for problem number four from our LC. Feel free to email me with any questions, uh, comments. I'll see you all next class.